Hi guys, Chris here, and today I'm joined by my fiance, Laura. Hey. <laughs> today we're going to be building Laura's first PC. So I've never built a PC before, I don't even know how to begin or what goes into it. So Chris is going to be talking me through the whole thing. If you're interested in any of the parts that um, we talk about, or indeed that are in the, in the video, they'll be linked down in the description below. Locally link will take you to your localised Amazon store. So, without further ado, let's get into it. <laughs> Right, so what we've done is put away all the parts um, and Laura's got an anti-static uh, wristband but on her foot and it's grounded um, on a metal chair. So now we're going to go ahead and open up the case. So where do you think we should start from? Um, this side? No. So it's this part. It's this bit at the front. Okay. And you want to open these. And then we've got this case. So this is glass, so mm -hmm. we'll just be a bit careful. This one lifts open just like that. Nice. And then now we can put this to the side. Looking at this, and obviously looking at parts that you've got behind, which might be out of shot. Yeah. Do you know what we should maybe start with? Well, I can see the SSD goes here, because it's labelled. Okay. And then there's kind of like a space here yeah. that maybe, I'm not sure, the fan goes. So. What you'll want is uh, over here. There'll be no fan or anything. Um, it'll be part. There's the motherboard. There's the motherboard goes straight on here. Right. Okay. But what you want to ensure is that if you want to pick up the motherboard, now if you place that down over here, so this part mm -hmm. is here. Okay. And before you put that in, you're gonna need this thing. You, what you want to do is first align this mm -hmm. on that right. Now it's gonna be the other way around because you want to see the ports and therefore gets placed in here. So yeah, the reason I want to do this is because you'll want to look at these things. Now these are called motherboard standoff screws mm -hmm. and they essentially place where these screws are over here. Okay, so you don't, you don't need all of them but there's two over here that are missing mm. and they're the ones which probably go in these extremities and that saves the board from kind of wobbling. Yeah. So if you want to just place it so we kind of get like an idea of which ones might be missing and then we can put on the standoff screw. So, so we need three screws if they are there. This, which you correctly said, is always provided with the, with the case. Mm -hmm. So you'll always get these with any case. So if you want to screw one here, one there, and I'll do this one. So we use a set of pliers to get these three in. Now we're going to change um, camera angle so you guys get a bit of a closer look at the PC. So all right, so now we're closer up, and um, well, Laura's going to put in the motherboard. Hopefully it fits in properly under this fan. If not, we can get that fan out. Okay, so we've added all the motherboard screws. Um, we made sure they were tight as well. Um, what I said to Laura is to start on, let's say, on the corner, and then go the opposite corner. And the reason why is because if you over tighten one side, it might be a little bit hard to place the other one and then you don't want to damage the board. So you do it kind of evenly um, as you would do. So we went diagonally across basically and then through the middle as well. So now the next part, we're going to go for the RAM. So you know which one the RAM looks like. Yeah. The only thing you have to look out for is the slot when you're putting it in over here. Okay. So you can see over here, one side is longer than the other. Yeah. And you can see over here. So then that's all you want to do. What you want to make sure is these are open. Okay. So then flip it around, that way around. Then put that in. Oh, one. Yeah. right. I get it. And then what you want to do is always place it in yeah, from your side first. That's it. So push it on this side first, this one over here. It'll click. That's it. And then push it this way. That's it. That's it. And then it clicks. Oh. So it clicks into place and then you want to do the same one with that. Now you've got your RAM. Mm -hmm. Processor was already put on. It should be pretty simple because all you do is line up the slots with the uh, processor um, and, uh, and then just plug it in the slot with the processor. So what you want to go next with is the power supply. Okay. And the reason we're going to do the power supply is because you're going to have a whole bunch of cables coming out of this thing. Where do you think it goes? Here. Oh. It's over here. There's the rear panel. The rear panel off. It's gonna go in. There we go. So there. So there, you can place it in right here. Okay, so this yeah. So what you want to do is the fan. Some people have different setups, but the fan sometimes they poke it that way. Mm -hmm. The problem, the reason why you don't have the fan poking that way is because this produces hot air. Hot air rises. So the issue with that is that when you've got a lot of components here, 
the hot air will rise and make the rest of your components hot. Mm. So instead you want to push the hot air down. Okay. Um, but it depends on people. But yeah, so this goes in like that. But yeah, it's in, but now you need to screw it in over here. So these are the holes over here, mm -hmm. pretty obviously there. And they're literally going to fit in. So what we're going to do is get the minimum one there. So you want to start with that one. So Nora's done the PSU over here. Now for us to have a bit more access to the PSU and truthfully just have a little bit more space for the cables, uh, we're going to see if we can get rid of this hard drive bay, which should be pretty simple as... Oh, there yeah. we go. Nice. Perfect. Why would you need a hard drive? If you've got like an ex um, uh, internal hard drive. Let's mm. see, for example, for me, I've got a uh, three terabyte hard drive. Mm. Okay. It's about 60 quid, whereas a three terabyte SSD costs me about 150 to 200 okay. quid. So this is like for the cheaper ones. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. But you can mount an SSD over here. Look, it says HDD SSD because it's got different screws. Yeah different size but okay. we don't need it because we only have one single S singular SSD so we've got SSD bay over here we just have to ensure that our cable is gonna reach over so this cable which you identified correctly was for the SSD and that is perfectly long enough so what we're gonna do we normally need to open this out and then mount it outside the case and then place it back in so okay. that should be able to go up like that. So what we're going to do is, what you need to do is, look, these are the ports. Mm -hmm. In this case, we're going to go downwards because we're going to have the cable running from here into there. Okay. And that that's a SATA connector and that needs to plug in there. And also from your power supply, you need power to this. Mm -hmm. It's as simple as getting those screws in. So what we need to do is consult our little screws that we had over here. Right, so Laura's now screwed in the SSD to its SSD bay. Right, and then now this cable, just logically, this one goes into the drive because it has to be flat. Whereas this one will be kind of hard to plug in. So yeah. we're gonna plug it in now. And this, it's got a little L shape. Mm -hmm. and it corresponds with the L shape over here so it then plugs in in one single direction okay. and then we're gonna have that trailing there and we'll get to that later so we're gonna go for the power supply cable first of all you need to power your motherboard and the motherboard one it literally even says it to motherboard mm -hmm. it's absolutely mahoosive 24 pin or 36 pin I've lost I don't know how many pins it is okay so that's one so that's really important there's your CPU one so okay. you're gonna need that one so this is, one's for your processor, one's for your motherboard. So these these two cables we definitely need. So Molex, it looks like that. Mm -hmm. SATA looks like that. Okay. Completely different connectors, but essentially they've got the same purpose to basically drive power. So this would be your graphics card one. These ones plug in over here. So if you look at this, it says two motherboard. This one says two power supply. Mm -hmm. So basically these two need to be connected into the respective ports it might be labeled down there so yeah do you want to do the cpu one now we've changed angle yeah. as per laura's suggestion and laura actually made a good observation what's the difference between the one with two split and another one there's another non-split essentially the only difference is that some motherboards take a single four pin whilst other ones take eight pin and in our in our case our asus Sa saber 2 z77 takes eight pin so it doesn't really matter if you go this way or the one which is attached so okay. it's a good observation it's a good point so Thanks. all right now it's time to install the cpu cooler so i've gone through it with laura just before but this is the rear plate, the rear mounting plate. It was quite interesting of this uh, CPU cooler, it's got different indications as to do socket. So when you are to buy a motherboard, you'd know what type of socket it is, and therefore you'd adjust it to the level, and therefore it adjusts these little metal things. And then that basically just slots into the back of the motherboard. We're gonna tilt it around so you guys can see the CPU cooler, because I'm gonna hold this in place while Laura plugs, plugs in the CPU cooler. Okay, so at the front, um, what you want to first count how this goes on now it might be pretty easy to understand that this clips on here and then it clips on and doesn't get loose over here but it's quite important to know before you put this mounting bracket on and then put the CPU cooler on to know where your fans gonna sit so for example if I put it like this the fan is gonna be facing a rear fan so therefore this is gonna be sucking air whilst the other one's gonna be pulling out air and it's gonna cause a wind trap so the, the fan needs to be placed this way around. So the air is going in this way through the radiator, cooling your processor, 
and pushing the air and then the fan over here that's already pre-installed is going to suck that air out. So therefore causing a ni nice little airflow of your cake. Once you've got that worked out, we can then start installing the back plate. So let's go ahead and do that, or the plate is, should I say. So we've got into a bit of a problem because um, I've realized that the Sabre 2 z 77s plastic over here is conflicting with the mounting bracket over here. In this case, it clips in to the side. You can see I've removed the fan so we can actually see the screw. So what we're going to try and attempt over here is put the um, CPU thermal paste on, put the back plate on and try and wiggle this in by kind of like pushing down the plastic as we did initially. Uh, so we're gonna try that. If that really doesn't work, then what we're gonna have to do is remove the motherboard and get rid of the um, plastic saber tooth um, armor, so to speak. So yeah, let's uh, let's see how we, we get on. And so we're back. Uh, as you can see, the um, the actual saber tooth uh, armor plate has now gone, uh, and we've reinstalled the motherboard into the case. Um, and also, uh, what we've realized is that we need to pre-mount um, the CPU cooler and simply because of the capacitor design over here. So now what we're going to do is install that, uh, but before doing that we're going to reapply the thermal paste um, and then go ahead with the installation of the PC. Now that's the thermal paste on, so now we're going to go ahead with the back plate and the CPU cooler. So there we go, we've got the CPU cooler now installed with the fan. We're going to go ahead and plug in everything in just a bit. But first of all, uh, in order to have internet, we're going to plug in the um, the wireless card. If you look at the ports over here, these small little ports over here have to go on the motherboard. And in this case, we're going to go for this one. As you notice, if you try and if you were to try to plug this in, there'll be a little port over here that you have to open. So in this case, what you have to do is you have to kind of pop pop, uh, pop these out. Okay. So um, do you want to go for it? Do you want to try popping them out? Yeah. Does it break? Yeah. So there we go. Uh, Laura's now popped that uh, part off and uh, now she's going to put on the wireless card. So what you want to ensure is this little metal bracket over here goes in between the case and the edge of the motherboard. Okay. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Now you can see over here it wiggles, and the reason it wiggles is because we need to attach a screw. So now what we're going to do is find a screw from the mother uh, from the case and attach that. So there we have it. We have the um, the wireless card now installed. It's properly fastened uh, with the screw over here. And now what we're going to do is install the fan. So we've got um, three of these 120 millimeter fans, and uh, this case uh, in, can take a 320 millimeter fans. Now in order to access this. Sweetie, what do you think we, we should do in order to try and access this bay over here? Um, I reckon you take off this front panel. Yep, exactly. Brilliant. So to push this, it might feel forceful, but you just have to just push out and it kind of props open. And now you can see you've got access to the front port. So now what we're going to do is screw in these fans. So there we have it. We've got the three fans now installed. Um, at the front of the case and now we are going to plug in all these cables and I'm going to try and explain them as best as I can <laughs> to Laura. Yeah, so first off um, what we want to do is connect up the power supply cables to the actual motherboard. So I'm going to flip over the case and now we've got all these cables. So these cables have to kind of feed into the front but if you remember we talked about a SATA cable, well one of the SATA cables is um, actually for the SSD so that can actually go directly in so you will want to make sure the direction is uh, right and then you plug it into the SSD. Once that is plugged in we'll get into cable management in a bit but now we want to um, bring forward the motherboard and the CPU power cables. So you can see over here uh, we've got the motherboard one because the motherboard connection is somewhere around here and the CPU one at least on this motherboard is at the top so now when we flip it around those cables should be there. So do you want to try and plug this one in? So it plugs in this part outwards okay. over here so you kind of have to flip it yeah like that. So it should click if you find it hard it's always worth holding the motherboard from oh. underneath mm -hmm. so it allows you to click and that's why we put the mo motherboard standoff screws before. Next one is the CPU one so again these um, clicking parts as you can see probably from there yeah. it's on the outside so it's quite hard because you want to watch out on this because that's going to be absolutely razor sharp. And so now we've got the CPU one in and we've got the motherboard one in uh, so next up what we're going to do is we've got this one over here for the fan um, and what we want to do is actually plug this one in to the motherboard because this one will run it at its full power 
at constant power, whilst this one will be regulated by the motherboard. Now, you can find out where the motherboard ones are, they're little three pin ones on the motherboard usually, um, or you can look at, you can consult your motherboard manual. Now, it's worth bearing in mind that if you're coming to PC building for the first time, your most important one is the CPU fan one. And the motherboard has dedicated CPU fan headers. Again, you can consult the um, your user guide and it's usually mentioned over here as to what they are. Uh, but I know in terms of my motherboard, uh, CPU fan headers are at the top. Uh, it's, re it's written CPU fan and you've got usually CPU fan opt. So first we're gonna plug in this one. So in terms of this, uh, for this one, in terms of the headers you should look for, you should look for chassis fan, so CHA. Again, there's one at the top at, of my motherboard. If you don't know where they are, again, consult your manual for that. So next up, we're gonna plug in the fans to this little controller thing. It comes with some uh, Velcro, which you can attach to, each set, it, to itself. Uh, we're gonna stick it towards the back and have the fan things there, and we fed it through uh, these uh, metal grills. So there we go, we've done the controller now. It's got Velcro attached to it. Uh, it doesn't really have to stay that steady but anyway it doesn't matter and and all we have to do now is plug in the fans and what we're going to do is ensure to plug them in a sequence we'll also make sure that this is actually connected up to power and so you need the molex connector over here so you can see this is uh, the male and female over here and just make sure you line them up and then you just plug them in now these cables which come with the case have to be plugged into the motherboard now these are an absolute nightmare what you should normally look for is what your actual manual says and that's why we've got the user guide over here these ones are very easy um, so they're indicated with HD audio USB and this is USB 3 we're gonna flip this around and so you can guess as to where they actually plug in. Where do you think these go? Just I reckon hang. they go down in this bottom section. So that's not a bad shout. These two do. These okay. will always do. These, this one, the blue one, goes right here. Okay. Again, you will like if you are not sure, you can always consult your motherboard manual. You can see here the groove, and that fits in over here, like that. Now these ones. It's quite hard to read, but it'll be at the bottom of the motherboard or on your manual again, where it'll tell you HD audio or USB. So now we've plugged in the uh, HD audio, the front audio port and the USB. Uh, what we did instead of feeding it from the front over here, we fed it from behind um, and the case conceals it quite nicely. And then we fed through the um, SSD SATA. There are different SATA ports. If you look around, you might see them over here. They're different colored, at least in, in um, on this motherboard. Uh, they all have a different meaning. Again, consult your motherboard manual because it will tell you what the port versions are um, and what they uh, what's the best one. So, for example, over here, uh, the middle ones are Intel uh, serial ones. The ones at the end are AS Media ones. So you just want to make sure that you're connected them at the best speed possible. And in this case, it's the top ports that we're going to use. So, in other words, the brown ports over here. So now we're going to plug in these cables. Now what they do is they end up being over here. Again, to understand where each one goes because it's very hard to actually see what it is. First you need to read what it says. So for example over here um, it's saying HDD LED Plus. They have all different meanings, um, one of which is the actual power button. If you don't plug this in, you can't switch on your PC. They'll be just a completely dead button. Same with the reset button or the LED that has it there. Uh, again, in order to do that, consult your manual. And there we have it. We've got all the cables now connected. Obviously, we'll, we'll double check them as well. We're going to use the cable ties in order at the back of the PC to kind of make it a little bit more organized. Uh, here's the look of the PC, which looks pretty good. Um, what I would suggest is before putting on the panel is to plug it in and turn it on to see everything work for your first boot and if everything works uh, even after past a Windows installation uh, then yeah you can you can put the panel back on so next step is Windows installation and of course booting it up okay so moment of truth we're gonna turn the PC on for the first time and fingers crossed it'll work so First things first, just need to turn on the main power supply yep. switch at the back. Like That's so. it, you can see power is connected. Also just to make sure that we put the um, Wi-Fi um, 
antennas in and make sure everything's plugged in. You will also want to make sure that your monitor is switched on. And by the way, shout out to Philips for actually um, uh, hooking Laura up with this uh, 1440p uh, 75 hertz monitor. So yeah, now moment of truth. Let's go for it. Woo! <laughs> Very glowy. <laughs> Amazing. So there we go, everything seems to be booting. We'll see if any error codes come up with those red LEDs. They seem to be passing. Um, when it comes to the PC, I'm gonna spam the delete key because I wanna get straight into the BIOS. And there we go, we're booted into the BIOS. Woo! <laughs> That's good, that's good news. So the reason you wanna boot into the BIOS, there's twofold. Um, if you're doing your PC for the first time, the most important thing is to go into the monitor and you can check your CPU temperature over here just in case your CPU fan is not working, just in case um, you've not properly mounted your CPU um, cooler, whatever it might be, you wanna ensure that this is relatively low and 25 centigrade is very, very low, which is great. Um, in my case, um, uh, this uh, CPU is already overclocked. It's all done all the overclocking settings. You can see it's um, maintained all the same settings I had before, as, before, as I said before. It's an i7-3700K um, and now what we're going to do is plug in the USB drive which we already installed on a, a separate machine so that we can install Windows 10. So we are back and uh, you might notice we're in a different sort of attire and it's a new week and the reason behind that is because we've been busy at work. In that time Laura has been using her PC on a daily basis for a week. Now, also, it's worth bearing in mind that uh, Asus in that time did also send a graphics card which we're going to install. So shout out to Asus for sending the GTX 1660. Um, and yeah, Laura's gonna install her first graphics card into a computer. So uh, yeah, let's uh, let's get into it. So you can see over here the, um, the PC has slightly changed and that's actually due to the CPU cooler. I wasn't quite happy of how it was mounted so I ended up buying a new PC cooler altogether uh, and mounting that, but the same principle kind of applied. So now we're going to um, install the graphics card. Now, there are metal parts over here uh, which can be flung out as we did with the wireless card. In this case, unlike the wireless card which only takes one slot, the graphics card takes two slots. In this case, we're going to have to pop out two of those metal parts, uh, which we're going to do now. So to accommodate the graphics card, what we've done is moved the wireless card down um, one notch uh, simply because it was too close to this fan and this generates quite a lot of heat so you don't want it to then pass on to another card. It's also worth bearing in mind there are a few different slots depending on your motherboard um, with the uh, the PCI slot. We'll always pretty much always want to mount it on the highest one, in other words, the one closest to the um, processor, simply because that always runs on the fastest speed. Of course, your mileage may vary, but in our case, uh, the top one is the one we want to mount it on. So now Laura is gonna go ahead and actually put in the graphics card. So uh, Laura's gonna uh, align it as we did before. Um, uh, you have to align the graphics cards at least to the slot over here. Uh, and for some reason, if it hasn't been opened already, your, your slot, you'll just have to open up the slot over here with the graphics card. So then when you put it in, you just need to push the graphics card in and there you go, it'll click into place. Um, and then a little latch over here will uh, latch on to the graphics card. So now we're gonna screw in uh, the graphics card to the case. So now the graphics card is installed. And as you can see in this, car in this card itself, it needs power. Now, as I explained previously, uh, with the power supply, when it comes with cables, in this case we've got a fully modular one, uh, there's a power supply for PCIe, in this case it's for graphics cards. Uh, you'll want to plug this into your power supply and then plug it into over here. So, Sudi, if you want to go ahead. Now, in this case, it's a 8-pin, so these two kind of go in together, like that, um, and then they then plug in to here. So there we go and it's now plugged in and now we're going to plug everything in and boot up the PC again. So there we have it, we have Laura's PC now set up. It's just worth bearing in mind that you will want to connect up your uh, display cable uh, into your graphics card rather than your motherboard and then it should pick up. Make sure you install all the right drivers. Um, in this case we had to install the GeForce drivers and then you should be good to go in terms of that. Now it's worth bearing in mind um, just a few things. If you're connecting up to your uh, display 
display for the first time. I'd always suggest DisplayPort. If you don't have DisplayPort, use HDMI. If you don't have HDMI, DVI. Nowadays, you shouldn't have VGA, which is the old school connection, but um, I would go in that order if possible. Now, in terms of lower setup aside the PC, I'd like to thank actually Abconcore for actually sending out the case, um, and that also includes the PSU and the front fans as well, the three front mounted fans. Uh, also, Asus for sending out that graphics card. The rest of the parts were um, came from my old PC build, so the Corsair RAM, the Asus motherboard, and my Intel processor, and then we bought the CPU cooler as well. In terms of her desk, she has an IKEA desk, which is actually painted really well in full black, as you'll be able to see over here. Um, and then you've got a HyperX Elite uh, Alloy RGB keyboard with the G502 mouse, a mouse pad from HyperX, uh, Audio Engine D1 DAC, the Philips monitor, which we said. So again, thank you for Philips for actually sending out this monitor, it's fantastic. Uh, she's also got a BenQ screen bar, which you might see just above there for extra light. And then she's got a Logitech um, camera as well. Uh, then there is also some Creative T100 stereo speakers, which are plugged in over here via optical to the motherboard. That is um, Laura's setup and Laura's desk and PC builds complete. Okay, so finally, thank you for watching. As you can see, I built my first PC with a lot of help, but maybe <laughs> one day in the future, I would be able to tackle it alone who knows yeah, maybe. Um, let us know in the comments if you have any questions or any thoughts on the video and as always like and um, share the video if possible <laughs> all right guys take care and bye bye bye